Meanwhile, let's bring in Laura Ingram. She is the person who runs Life Z. She's a kind of big radio show that starts in about an hour, and she joins us for our nation's capital. Laura Ingram, when we're when we're anchoring with Brian, Steve and I know if there is a joke to be had, we're just going to keep that our mouth shut because true. he's going to say it. That I wanted to steal it. I decided not to. I gave it to Brian. Well, we had no idea. We'll do this in the after the show report, but. Uh, uh, but Laura, real, uh, real clear, it's uh, President Trump showed some discipline yesterday, not making things worse uh, with the FBI investigation, keeping things on his agenda in Kentucky. Well, I think that uh, after yesterday with the uh, Comey testimony and Rogers up there on Capitol Hill, it, it, it's clear that uh, this investigation has been going on now, we know, since last July. And one of the most interesting exchanges uh, was when Congresswoman Elise Stefanik from California asked Director Comey, what is the normal protocol for reporting to the White House and to congressional, senior congressional intel uh, leaders uh, in the DNI about an ongoing investigation, a counter intel investigation? And he said, he seemed slightly uncomfortable. He said, well, regularly it's, it's quarterly. Uh, and we're just learning about this in March. Well, it would indicate that the president was aware of this investigation last mm -hmm. fall. This was a moment in the hearing that right. didn't get a lot of attention. There was a writer on Conservative Treehouse who, who caught this yesterday. That was really interesting because it does, again, raise this question of a, of, of a sitting administration investigating another camp, you know, an, an opposition campaign in an election year on something that seems like quite tenuous at, at very best with the information uh, that we know they had at the time. Uh, so President Obama, if that's true, he knew about the investigation and Congress was not notified officially, apparently, until yesterday. Sure. Yeah, you know what's amazing, too, is there's no Russia. That they, they act like President Obama was all over Russia for eight years, and Donald Trump wants to have good relations. For eight years, there was no problem. Remember Mitt Romney, the <laughs> 1980s, called they want their foreign policy back. And if they knew about the investigation in July and the problems they were having in their campaign and what they did with uh, John Podesta's email in July, we didn't get sanctions until January. Well, that, and it, it, again, it, it smacks of, of political uh, acting, not pragmatic leadership on the part of the Obama administration. And I know everybody's all hot today on, on well, Comey seemed very forthright and, and Rogers seemed like they were presenting a very, you know, you know, logical case to the public. But I think there were a lot of follow-up questions that weren't asked yesterday. This is why I always like when outside counsel comes in and questions uh, some of these key people like a Comey or, or a Rogers. I, I would have liked to have had one of the uh, folks and uh, one of the people on the committee say, well, how do we know it wasn't one of you who unmasked the identity sure. mm -hmm. of one of these targets? I mean, can you say today that you, weren't the, you, know, you or anyone on your staff wasn't the, the individual who unmasked this information? Now, that's an explosive question, but don't you think we should have had that question asked? Or, sure. or are they sacrosanct individuals who can never be asked any questions about possible uh, politicization of an ongoing investigation? I, I would have asked that if I were on the committee. Yeah, it's something everyone is wondering. That would be an excellent question. Folks are writing in on, you know, we're checking our email constantly throughout the show, Laura. A lot of people are upset with James Comey because he didn't answer many of the questions and people are accusing him of being political. Listen to, listen to how he didn't answer most of the questions yesterday. Yeah, I can't answer that. Same answer. Same answer. I'm not going to comment on that. Same answer. I don't know what to make of that. Not going to comment on that. Same answer. Same answer. Same answer, Mr. Swalwell. I'm not. I'm trying to be helpful, but I'm not going to answer. I understand. That. Not going to comment on that. Same answer. Same answer. Same answer as before. I'm not going to answer. I'm not going to answer that. Please don't overinterpret what I've said. I'm not going to answer, Mr. Swalwell. Same answer. I don't want to say. Okay. What's your reaction to that, Laura? Well, and look, if, it's, if he's responding to questions that are purely political questions and, or, or policy questions that are not related to the FBI, then I don't really have a problem with that. But I, again, going back to the, the, the question uh, the, of when the president was notified of this investigation, and I mean, what, what, he, what was he notified about? Was he notified about the specific uh, Americans who were who were uh, who were surveilled, uh, Mike Rogers and Roger Stone or uh, Carter Page. Was he aware of this? And was there any back and forth between the FBI director and the West Wing of the White House? Uh, those are those are pretty important questions. At the same time, I do think it's uh, probably pretty wise at this point for President Trump not to tweet 
uh, issues or uh, points that are tangential or that are not factually confirmed. I think three weeks ago when he, uh, or two weeks ago when he tweeted that comment out about Obama wiretapping, that was a mistake. He shouldn't have done that. Uh, and I think he should stay focused on the things he promised the country that he'd do, which he did last night. It was Obamacare repeal, the wall, uh, you know, rebuilding our economy, all those core issues that drove the electorate. This investigation is going to run its course, right. uh, but they're going to try to use this to now get him off track every chance they can. They want to use it, it to get him off track and to try to hurt his credibility. That's their goal. They, they want him out. I mean, they, they, sure. want, they want Senator President Feinstein Trump. Said it. Senator they, they Feinstein want him, said it over the weekend. Yeah. They want him to resign or they want him to be impeached. That is what the Democrats are after. Let's, let's just <laughs> let's be really blunt on what's going on here. This is not like playing footsie with, well, we'll give him a bad news cycle. They want him out. When you on the left wing blogs or even some of the other uh, cable competitors this morning, which I checked into, they want him out. So is he going to help them or is he going to get back to the focus of what Kellyanne was talking about, rebuilding this country right. and paring back the behemoth of the federal government, get it out of people's lives when it shouldn't be in people's lives and rebuild the, the trust that people need to have in this government. That's what he needs to focus on. I think he's very capable of doing that. But this, uh, this FBI investigation, I think it was right yesterday, it will continue to be a cloud over this administration. They just can't, they, they can't create any more clouds while, while they're at it. Well, let's hope they pick up some momentum. Let's hope uh, that the president is able to, uh, yeah, the president would love the fact that his Affordable Care Act replacement and repeal thing goes through on Tuesday, uh, Thursday, that is to say, but that looks a little squishy right now. Meanwhile, he could also get a little momentum with uh, Neil Gorsuch, who yesterday, you know, a great first day, but today really is the day mm -hmm. when they start grilling him. Yeah, today's going to be uh, some fireworks, no doubt. I mean, Gorsuch came across as as uh, I was reading somewhere, aggressively earnest. Like he got <laughs> up and he hugged his wife, he talked about his family, got a little choked up. Uh, and he came across as uh, very poised and, and kind of what you, what you want a justice to be. Uh, not political, right. uh, that's not his role, he's not a legislator. But today it will be abortion, uh, there'll be all the questions probably about uh, detainees, uh, past precedent at the court, uh, uh, whether he'll use, uh, you know, whether he'll, uh, you know, move to overturn prior precedent. And the Democrats will, uh, just because he, was, he seems like a nice guy doesn't mean that the Democrats won't turn up the heat on him today. Mm -hmm. Senator Dianne Feinstein tried to land a blow. Tell me if she did. Okay. I am concerned when I hear that Judge Gorsuch is an originalist who sits on the Supreme Court should not simply evaluate legalistic theories. They must understand the court's decision have real world consequences. Okay, she's an well, originalist. Yeah, she want, well, she wants judges to act as legislators, but they have to be liberal legislators. Uh, what Dianne Feinstein does, doesn't understand is that if, if, uh, if conservatives got on the court and decided, well, we're just going to act like uh, Tom Cotton or <laughs> we're going to be Trey Gowdy, that's not going to be good for, for the rule of law. It's certainly not right. going to be good for, you know, for, for liberals. What's best is that the judges look at the facts, look at the law, uh, faithfully apply the Constitution, and that's it. Yeah. If, they, if Dianne Feinstein wants to change the law, she can try to change the law. She's got to get more senators in power and try to change the law. But that's not the role of the justice. But that comment really does demonstrate the, the, the divide between those who see the role of the court as, as circumscribed and those who want the court to be right. extrajudicial actors, <laughs> um, namely legislators. There's sure. a long list of Democrats that supported him when he was up for the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals. And... Right. Several of them are now saying they're not for him, and yep. uh, we'll have to see how Let's see what happens. Is. All right. Laura, have a great day. Thanks for dropping by. Great to see you guys.